Hey everybody, it's Christy with Christy Cole Artistry and thank you for joining me tonight. Tonight I'm going to be working on a 10 by 20 canvas. I'm going to run it vertically uh, because it is uh, quite thin and I've got some leftover colors that I'm going to be using along with some crimson and some violet, possibly a little bit of white accent. Um, but before I begin tonight, I just want to say thank you to all of my subscribers. I really appreciate you sticking around with me. I hope you're enjoying my videos. Um, I love your comments, as you know. I uh, try to respond uh, back as soon as I hear the um, comments come in. Sometimes I'm working, so I can't do it while I'm working. But as soon as I um, possibly can, I do respond to, directly to you on those comments. So thank you for the comments. I appreciate it. Um, and... So tonight the color palette is going to be, like I said, using up some old colors. And then it's just going to be on this 10 by 20 um, because some of the colors that I have, um, such as this uh, metallic blue or pearl blue that we made up for a few other paintings, I only have a little bit left, but I don't want to waste it, so I wanted to put it into another beautiful painting. So I'm going to go ahead and get the canvas prepared, then I'll bring you down and we'll get started for tonight. Thank you. I'll be right back. Okay, so here is our 10 by 20 canvas, and here are my leftover paints that I want to use. And then I'm also going to add my Academy Acrylic Alizarin Crimson and my Academy Acrylic, Acrylic I can't talk tonight, Deep Violet. Um, this was the pearl blue from, um, I believe it was our how to use up leftover paint video uh, a little bit ago. And then this one is the pearl. Let me show you this one. This one is one of the pearls that we mixed up just recently. Um, and I used it in the Pearls, Pearls, Pearls painting which came out absolutely gorgeous. Um, but I only have a little bit left, and I think it'd be a great accent. So I'm going to um, add it to this painting. See, it already looks pretty. And then I have this leftover purple. And this was from quite a while ago. Um, I mean, my poor container is crushed in on itself. Let's stir it up and see if it's even usable anymore. Oh yeah. So this is a purple metallic that I used. And to be honest with you, I do not remember in which painting was last used. But we're going to try to use that up as well. And I'm going to get the lid off of this. And we'll just grab one of these. I love these... Um, metallics and the pearls. Um, I bought that pearl medium and I absolutely love playing with this pearl medium. I'm just adding a little water because these are a little bit thicker from sitting. And I need to make sure that they are going to flow since we are doing acrylic flow painting. So I'm just going to do a normal Dutch pour tonight on a white white background. Um, there we go. And uh, we'll see how beautiful it comes out with these colors. Another reason for choosing a small canvas is to use up small amounts of paint. Um, if I was to try to do a painting on, say, a 20 by 16 or bigger, um, I would just wouldn't have enough of this color and it would get lost. So, these little bits of color are great for these smaller canvases. And not everybody has, you know, giant walls to put paintings on. So, you know, people like to have smaller paintings for, um, like I put them in, the bedrooms and stuff. They're just my accents for the bedrooms. Um, if you remember that painting I did with the green and the 
purple, I believe it was. And it was a side split, but when I um, put the glazing on, it uh, didn't work out right. I have that one in my bedroom. And it looks gorgeous in there because I also have mint green walls, which makes the, uh, you know, it just works. Okay, so let's get our white on. And I mixed up a gallon plus of white last weekend because I found that Menards now sells empty uh, paint gallons, like brand new paint gallons. Oh, it's on the other side of the table. So, but you can buy the clean brand new paint gallons instead of trying to clean them out yourself. So I bought one and I'll just keep using it. So I filled the gallon, I filled my um, quart jug, and I've also filled this old Blick half gallon, and that's what I've been pouring into my quart size. So I was able to get a lot of paint done over last weekend. All right, so I'm just gonna use the spatula real quick on this one since it's not that large. And my paint is nice and fresh, so it's flowing really nice. And I'm going to be doing a few different uh, videos. Um, if you like the pearls, 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 I am hoping that you will love what's coming up. So I'm kind of working on a little bit of a different type of painting. Um, you know, you need to switch it up every once in a while. And so these new paintings are going to be out of this world, you might say. And I hope you enjoy them because I'm having so much fun learning how to um, do some of these paintings and then using new tools to create them. So, like I said, I hope you enjoy them. All right, I think we've got a base coat, but I do see how thin we are up here. And I didn't want to overdo, but when you see thin spots, you need to fill them in. Otherwise, the paint won't flow. So we're just going to make sure that we, whoop, make sure that we fill that in. All right, then we're going to get these sides. I thought I leveled this, but it seems to be leaning this direction. So I may have to put a popsicle stick or two underneath here. Once we get the, the pour done and the blowout, I'll be able to see which way it's actually pouring off, and then I'll prop it up. There we go. So... Uh, one other thing that, you know, we've been in and out of doctor's appointments. Went to the Mayo Clinic, going back there a couple more times, I think. And then um, just trying to get stuff, you know, find stuff around the house um, that I have put up, in, like in the rafters and stuff. And I tried to do it myself because I'm impatient. And I went to move the ladder, you know, open the ladder up. It's one of those metal ones that you can, um, like, kind of make into a scaffolding almost if you need to, and it folds up, and it, you, like, take these things out, and then you can go up and down with it. Well, I decided to do that, and I ended up pinching my finger in there, so now my poor finger is just throbbing and all purple, a little blood blister there. So it's, every time I go down like this, it throbs, so if I hold it up, it feels better. So that's just me. I'm a klutz. Okay, so you saw those three colors, my crimson and my violet. And if needed, I have this little spray bottle, and I put some of that, um, that white, but I added some water to it. So if I feel like there's a spot that, that I want a little bit more um, white, 
and possibly some cells to be created. I might squirt that on there, but I'm not sure yet since we are already doing a white background. Okay, so let's clean off our spatula. Put that off to the side. Let's torch the bubbles. So nice to have my torch full again. Okay, now the order of the paints. Um, because I have the least amount of the leftovers, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the purple on first. So I'm going to use the, the Academy Acrylics Deep Purple first. Okay. Ooh, boy, that one uh, kind of exploded when I opened the lid. So let's shake it and make sure. We might have had a clog at the top. Yeah, there's a little clog that, that released itself. I have so many colors of paint in so many bottles now that I honestly don't know which ones. I don't think, it, unless I you know look at the video before I start this one, I don't know which one I used last. Okay. So most of my Dutch pours lately have been going uh, my right to your left. So today I'm going to go my left to your right, just to switch it up a little bit. And like I said, we're just going to do kind of a normal Dutch pour with these colors. So that was the deep violet, and now I am going to put on the Al Alizarin Crimson next. And I'm going to clean this too. All right, here we go. Because I like red and purple together. And when they mix with the white, they turn a lighter purple and a lighter pink. Now, next I think I'm gonna use this darker of the blues. And this, again, is leftover paint. Don't remember the exact color of it, but we're gonna add it because it's got pearl in it and it's pretty. Like so. And I want to put my lids on because if I have it leftovers, I am going to use it in another painting. And these other two, I don't think we're going to have any leftover. So this is the purple pearl, or no, metallic purple. This one is an actual metallic. And that pretty much used that up. And then this blue is from our Pearls, Pearls, Pearls. And yes, I have a lot of paint on here, but I'm okay with that because as you know, I love color. Okay, so we'll put these up to the side like so. Let's torch the colors. have a potential issue and since I have a little bit of paint left I'm going to take care of it now and that is making sure that my corners are covered. So let's use the leftovers so as not to waste because they, it will get blown off as you know. All right we need to have some on there to with. Alrighty so the colors look really pretty. Let's see how they blow out. Are we ready? Let's, should we use the little dryer today? Let's use the little one. Yeah. Let's go ahead and use the, the Drew Barrymore flower. Okay, here we go. After I get it untangled. Okay, now I got it. Now I got it. Here we go.
this is so pretty. Did you guys notice what happened right there? Okay, if you were watching when I was blowing that out, it sort of drug a lump off the canvas. I'm hoping it's not sitting over here, but it made a pretty pattern afterward. This is so pretty. I can already see the ton of shimmer. And this will all dry really dark. I love it. Wow. I just, I like, I'm so glad I used the, the um, deep um, violet and the crimson first because they're presenting this beautiful outline around the, all the blues. It's so pretty. I do see an issue, so I'm going to take care of it right away, is lumps. So right here is a lump, a clumpy lump. I hope you can see that. And clumpy lumps, what will happen is, is when they dry, um, and not every painting is perfect. I mean, so you, if you're going to wreck the painting by taking the lump out, leave the lump in. People can deal with it. Um, but we try to get the painting as flat as possible. But you know, you, if, you, if you've worked with canvas, um, not all the canvases are smooth. So, for example, when I buy these canvases, which are those um, Fluid Artist Loft uh, paint pouring canvases, they are like a smooth surface, okay? So if you have lumps and bumps in there, you're going to notice it a lot, but it's still okay. Now these canvases have a rougher texture, and you can buy um, several different types of canvases that even have rougher surfaces. and. Some people actually like that because they can do like almost 3D buildups using the sculpting um, medium and stuff, which is really cool. Um, so if you get a few lumps and bumps in there and it dries, try not to, to mess with it because you're just going to ruin it. Just leave it alone. It's fine. If the person really likes the painting, they will purchase the painting lumps and all because it's part of the character of what you did when you created that painting. Okay, I'm adding some white because I'm missing it there. And I want to make sure that my sides look pretty. So whenever I see that, I like to take care of it quickly. Because I want to keep the I want to keep the white flow down going. The color flow down is where if I want the color to stop, then I will just not tap at it, um, but like right here, the white, or the, the blue hasn't finished going down, so I needed to tap that in order to encourage that, and then right next to it is this whole blank white spot, so we can pick up paint from other places and just go around um, and clean up your sides, let them run down, and then scrape them, always scrape your sides. So again, I'm missing some white over here. I'm just going to pour it on my finger. Because I don't want to, you know, oop, didn't want to waste it by pouring it on the table. And I don't want to pick up, uh, I don't want to pick up white from over there in case it's got the other colors mixed in when I only want white here. Okay. I'll come over there and check that side. This is so pretty. I was I was a little hesitant um, because I thought maybe I was putting too many colors on a, on a small canvas, but it's gorgeous. So I can see in the light where this drug off and left like a little indent. That will flatten out. I'm not worried about it. And as far as scraping your sides, um, there are so many things you can use to do that. So I buy these um, heavy-duty barbecue skewers. Um, I think I got these at Menards actually in the barbecue department. You can use uh, these medium-sized tongue depressors, the large ones, the little regular popsicle sticks, whatever you want. Um, I usually choose by how thick my canvas is. So if my canvas is sitting way up in the air, I can get these tongue depressors under there and scrape with no problem. But this one is a smaller canvas. It's closer to the table. Um, I've got a couple layers of, of pads on here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my barbecue skier and start at the top here. And I am going to scrape 
my underneath all the way down. Okay, just like so. And then wipe it off. And then I just noticed, what did I notice? Oh, I noticed right here the light, the lightest blue. It looks white probably on the camera, but this little section is the blues coming down. And so I took a little bit of the blue to tap to help um, encourage that to finish coming down because it's not quite there yet. Over here I'm scraping because this is perfect and I don't want any more of this to come off the canvas. Now I'm scraping this off well because I don't want to put the blue that's on the stick underneath here and have the chance of it piling up and then going up the side of my painting. So see I'm just scraping along the edge and wiping it off. I get to these corners and I bring it under there and give it an extra wipe because I do fill my corners. I'll come over there and do that one in a minute. I hate reaching around with these skewers because I end up knocking stuff over. But this is so pretty. I'm so happy with this one. Oh, I love it. And I, like I said, I can see the shimmer already. So I'm going to grab the camera. Okay, so look at this gorgeous painting. Again, this is just a uh, 10 by 20, perfect for any size room. And let's take you down. This is still developing. And that's all I, I the only word I can think of is because um, before I grabbed the camera, these cells weren't here. And now look at them. They're just beautiful. I love the colors. I love how the um, deep violet and the crimson have mixed to make that beautiful outline throughout the whole painting and these cells that are popping are incredible then you go up here and you've got the mixtures of the turquoise blue or um, yeah the, the uh, pearl blue and the darker blue that made this beautiful um, other purple when it mixed with the red and then I love this section right here this is so pretty, how it just outlined it and then gave some detail in there. It's just beautiful. All right, let's see if I can get up all the way here. Yeah, I love that. I've done some other paintings like this with darker colors. These are a little bit more metallic pearl than the last one, and these will dry dark as well. And I know you guys love these paintings because I always get really good comments on them. So this one, the only difference is this one is going from left to right. Um, normally I go right to left when I Dutch pour, just because, I, I think it's because I'm right-handed and it just isn't more natural for me to go that direction. But I hope you like this painting as much as I do. It just keeps growing and developing. It's really pretty. So, and again, um, if you liked my Pearls, Pearls, Pearls painting um, with the planet on it, I've got some more paintings coming up in that kind of um, design, and I hope you enjoy those as well. So until my next video, thank you all for watching. I do appreciate you all, and please take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Bye.